Today, I'm going to tell you an amazing story of one man who has given birth to 98 children. He had all of them with 10 wives. I kid you not, we're not talking about one wife or two or three, we're talking about 10 wives. Look at them, one might assume that it is a village meeting. Putting them in one picture takes work, it requires squeezing them together. However, all of these people that you see here and others we did not find here today are one family. All of these you see in the photos are my family. I am their father. All these children you see and others that are not here today. I gave birth to 98 children with 10 women, and we all live together. His name is Musa Hasaji. At age 67, he gave birth to 98 children and had 568 grandchildren. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Musa gave birth to 98 children and now has 568 grandchildren. Apart from living in an eye-catching area, as you can see, how he and his offsprings live is impressive in itself. All this land they live in is his. He and his ten wives live in this one house. He built his children their own homes outside. It is homemade of many other houses, most of them made of grass. And this is where he stays with all his wives, beginning with Hanifa Hasaji, the eldest wife, to his younger wife Kankazi, who is younger by age than some of her husband's grandchildren. Yes. We are now heading to Butareja district, a city in the east of Uganda where there lives a man who married 10 women, each of whom gave birth to almost 10 children on average. Who is this man? Why did he have so many children? Does he even know their names? Does he remember the names of his wives? What does he do to be able to raise this whole family? <laughs> Welcome inside the world of Musa, a polygamist unlike any you have ever met. This story proves that no matter how many places you have been, the world can still throw surprises. I have just visited a family in Uganda. It is a family with a big difference. In fact, it is the biggest family in this country. If you think your home is occasionally chaotic and often expensive, then prepare to meet the biggest family in history. My name is Musa Hasaji. Whomever you might ask around here will tell you that they know me. All the children I have given birth to are 98. I have had all those children with 10 wives, and they all live with me here. I gave birth to my firstborn child when I was 17 years old. Among all the children I gave birth to, some are married adults, others are still young and are studying in high school. So far, I have 586 grandchildren. <laughs> This man says that he was born into a family of only two children. He grew up in a low-income family and it caused him to drop out of school when he reached the sixth grade of primary school. He says he married his first wife in extreme poverty because his father had nothing to the extent that they failed to give the woman's family a dowry. The time came and Musa decided to go into the business of selling millet that he grew in his hometown's countryside village to sell in Kampala, Uganda. While growing up, my father was still alive, so I went to school like other kids. But when I reached the sixth grade of primary school, my father failed to pay for me, so I stopped there. After a few years, I married my first wife when my father didn't have anything, not even a chicken or an egg. When he saw my bride, he was happy with her and started going to friends and relatives asking for support to help me marry that girl that I loved. But no one helped him. However, I still live with that woman. I used to see traders going to Kampala carrying millet. One day, I approached them and asked how they got money by selling millet. Therefore, they told me the bag's price and how they got it and sold it. So, I saw a cow's head, bought it for 6,000 shillings and roasted it. I sold that piece of a cow head on the streets, gained some money I used initially and bought three bags of millet. 
At the time, there was a train from a place called Gulu that was supposed to stop at our area by 2 a.m. We waited for the train to come and take us to Kampala. When we reached Kampala, we went to a millet trading place called Kiburi, and I sold my millets for 270,000 shillings. I was delighted and wondered how a cow meathead I bought for 6,000 shillings turned my income into 270,000 shillings. My father was impressed by that millet business and encouraged me to buy something else in Kampala, take it home and sell it to see the difference. Musa worked hard again and again to earn a living for his family. The time came when his business became very successful and he started to buy cows, so he ended up with enough cows to wed his wives. Furthermore, it made him more trusted in his hometown that whichever house he asked for a bride, they immediately gave her to him without hesitation. To be clear, you still had your first wife. Yes, the first one, and I still need to find the money to pay her dowry. Even so, I tried my best, because when I would meet someone selling chickens or ducks while I was looking for millet, I would buy them. The time came when I would buy four chickens, sell them, and buy a goat. That way, time by time, I ended up having hundreds of goats. Also, I sold goats, bought cows, and exchanged goats for cows until I got rich and had many cows. For a man who came from nothing, not even an egg, the business was successful for me, and my farm was quickly filled up. Therefore, I started marrying more women because I had gotten the dowry. For the first wife, I paid a dowry of three cows and four goats. For the second wife, the same. I paid a dowry of three cows and four goats and a small amount of money. For the third one, I realized that I was spending a big dowry because my cows were ending so fast so, I changed and started paying a dowry of two cows. When I reached the sixth woman, I thought and decided to look for something to support them. Musa says that after marrying six wives, he gave up and started thinking about what he could do to provide for his wives and children. He then started a business of slaughtering cows and selling their meat in the countryside. The business was successful, and it made him gain even more trust in the village that wherever he asked for a bride, they immediately agreed without hesitation. When I reached 30 children, that year went terrible. We cultivated but did not get a harvest, tried trading and failed, and all of us at home were hungry. Fortunately, the time came and things went back to the way they were. Farming was successful again and we got our good life back. The life of selling cow meat brought me the opportunity and hope for parents to give their daughters to me. I kept marrying until I had 10 wives. Everywhere I went, people told me that this man is a very hard-working man. It would be better to give him my daughter. And it would make me happy to hear that. However, I didn't know that I was putting myself in trouble because the more wives I got, more cows I had to offer. People still believe I will remarry again, but I advised myself to stop because I realized I was a little old. <laughs> These are Anifa, Sabina, Safuyadi, Zoreha, Amina, Muweza, Muhumembe, Mujazi, Muhufi, and Kankazi. All these women say that they live well and are happy to share the same man as 10 of them. <laughs> We were very curious to know how they cooked and asked one of these women. She told us that every woman cooks for themselves, but they all sleep in the same place.
mzee my father had a large piece of land so he gave this part of the land to me however i had previously bought seven acres which helped me support them i divided the acres and gave each woman and her kids one acre the three remaining acres my father gave me i gave them to the remaining three women and their children which are the same acres we utilize to get the food we eat here at home His wives come from different parts of the country and speak different languages. <laughs> but even so, it does not prevent them from sharing the same thread in their home. All these women live in the same house with one man. <laughs> This man, who looks strong but has reached the age of old days, says that he does not know the names of all his children and grandchildren, but convinced us that he recognizes them when he meets any of them. However, he has a notebook in which he writes the names of all his children and grandchildren so that he knows all his offsprings. Mm. Musa Hasaji says that having many wives is a blessing, and he firmly testifies that he is the only man with many wives in Uganda. Story by John C. Shamamba. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.